Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. A bit of a serious one today, so the GAMSAT 2020 results just came out and I'm seeing all these happy posts on social media about people finally getting the score they wanted and I'm so happy for them, for the people I've helped them get that score or my friends and I'm really really happy that they finally got the score they wanted. But it really made me think about the times. You know, the past couple of years when I was sitting this test and it took me five sips to get the score I wanted and it really reminded me of the times where I would all the score, the test results will come out, and I'll be looking at social media and how that made me feel. Uh, and it 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 was nothing about jealousy or anything. It it was just a feeling of you know being left behind when the world kept going, everyone getting the score they wanted and getting into medical school, whereas I'm I've been I've invested so much time into this goal, but it's taking me so much time to get it, and you know all that anxiety about whether I'm ever gonna get in. And it's really just a spiral and then it's really hard to pick yourself up from that and you know start pushing forwards for the next game set. So I thought I would make a video today about why it's okay. So now that I've passed it and currently in medical school, now that I look back, I think it's it's actually fine that it took me so many tries to get the score and how actually it was probably quite beneficial to my journey to medicine. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is realizing that medicine is not a rat race, right? What do I mean by that? People enter this career from all different ages, all different experiences, and that's what makes this career beautiful. So in my undergrad, I was really surrounded by um, just young, motivated people who, who you, know, you know, went out and got it done, and I thought that was it. That's what medicine is, a career for young people who are really smart and who just got the highest GAMSA scores and they become doctors. But now when I'm on the other side, I realized that the people I interacted with was just a really small population of doctors. The rest are people who've either, you know, been in the army, who've taken a couple years to do a master's, PhDs, or, you know, maybe in a completely different field or even done nothing and just went traveling and came back and decided that they wanted to do medicine. And oftentimes those are the people that know how to communicate with their patients. And if, if it's taking you a little bit of time to get into medical school, this is a great opportunity to figure out if you really want to do medicine, if medicine, if you understand what medicine is. And number two is get more experience, patient interaction, so you can be a better doctor. So the first thing you need to understand is that medicine is not a rat race. The average medical school ages are actually much higher than 20, they're around 25, 26. But in reality, some of my peers you know, have children They've been working in say radiology for 15 years or, or have been a physio for 10, 20 years. It doesn't matter. And now they decided they want to be a doctor and that, that's actually great. It's brilliant. So don't think it's a rat race and you got to get in before everyone else. Um, the next one, the next one is if you didn't get the score and now you've got a year or maybe two years where you have to, you know, keep trying to get the GAMSA score, doing an honors or a master's is actually a really good idea. So I personally decided to do an honors year. And in that year, I feel like I grew personally as well as professionally so much. Upskilling yourself will be valued very much by your future employers as well as your colleagues. Especially in something like research, which is so pivotal in medicine. If you can do, like in, in the honors here, you'll be working on a paper or maybe two papers. And if some of them get published, you will be recognized for that. And even as a doctor, you'll be appraising papers, you know, every day. So it, these are actually skills that really translate well into medicine. And if anything, you should be glad that you're getting the opportunity to do that. Because once you start medical school, it's really like medical school internship and then your sort of specialty and you just keep going forwards. Whereas now you're, you're pretty young or you have this time now to do something before you jump into this career, which is brilliant. Now talking about coming back to my honors years. So I, I got the opportunity to go into the wards and talk to patients. So I was in the, the aged care wards and it really solidified for me that I really wanted to do medicine. And that's something you should think about as well. For example, you can take this year to do some volunteering into um, hospitals or it doesn't even have to be hospitals. Maybe, you know, there, there's a lot of homeless shelters where you can really start to communicate with people and see if you enjoy that, right? Because there's so much hype around medicine once you get into medical school, the, like the hype sort of dies out and you start realizing, you know, the realities of the career. If you can take the time to see if you're going to enjoy that, the bread and butter of it, once you start medical school, that's such a good opportunity. So there are a lot of volunteering places, like for example, myself, I volunteered at the Royal Melbourne Hospital, where again, once a week, I'll go into the aged care wards. And it, it was honestly beautiful. I would sit down with a patient, all of them are over 65. 
and just sit down and talk about their, their grandkids, their family, and maybe pull up some pictures of their hometown and just seeing how happy it made them. Some of them would even cry just because I played the music from their childhood. And it also really helps you put into perspective how little this standardized test matters in the grand scheme of things. When, when, you, when, you, when you look at life, this, this test is nothing, right? This test doesn't define you. This test doesn't define your capabilities or whether or not you'll be a good doctor. So when, when I would see these people just looking back on their lives, then it made me really made me reflect, okay, I didn't get the GAMSA score I wanted, but, but who cares, right? I'll keep trying. I'll, let me live my life. Let me go chill with my friends. Let me go spend time with my family because that's what really matters. Um, let me just look at my notes here because I had something else I wanted to say. Now, this is also a really good time for you to start building your portfolio. Because so because there's mainly three parts, right? There's the GAMSA, there's a the GPA, and there's your portfolio, and then you get the interview, and then so, so on. The, the portfolio schools really value these volunteering experiences. So again, with volunteering, you can really build yourself and add, add your experiences to your portfolio, which can again help you get into medical school in the future. Now, with the portfolio though, be a little bit careful. The, the volunteering you do should really be continuous, like I did maybe once a week for every week for the year and not sort of one-off things because one-off things do seem a little bit, um, yeah, like continuous things seem like you've committed and you're really enjoying it so you've done it for a long time versus, you know, doing that one trip or that one fundraising event. So if you've got the year, it's a really good opportunity to start applying to all the different hospitals because all the different hospitals are taking a lot of volunteers, especially now, because they're starting to realize what exactly what, a, what an impact they make to the patients. And lastly, I just wanted to touch on the path forward. Um, so the, the next GAMSA, or the GAMSA after. The first thing is to do is to take a couple weeks off and just clear your mind. That's what I did. If I started studying for GAMSAT again, I would, first of all, I wouldn't be motivated to study because I just had the test. I just went through months of prep, didn't get the results I wanted. And now I'm doing more questions with the next GAMSAT being, you know, months later. That's not good for your mental health. That's not really adding much to your prep as well. So what you should do is take a couple of weeks off and then take at least another couple of weeks to plan forwards first before you start any GAMSAT preparation. So my final sit, so from the fourth to the fifth sit, the main thing I changed was my mindset around when to start pre preparing. So I had a solid plan. I, my, my, my preparation was quite reflective. I was really nitpicking like what things am I really bad at. So start with the plan for now. I don't want to get into too much detail about the GAMSAT plan, plan, um, sorry, plan preparation. But let's just take a, take two weeks off. Let's just de-stress. Go, go spend some time with your family, friends, do things that make you happy. Because really, I'm telling you, now that I am on the other side, you look back and you think, whoa, why, why was I stressing so much? It doesn't matter, right? And I'm telling you, people in medicine come from all different ages, different experiences. And if you keep trying, you will get in. There is no, no, no one's predisposed, you know, predisposed to not getting in. I feel like if you if you try hard enough, you will. Um, just take the time to think if you if you want to, if this is something you really want. So, so flip it, think of it as a good thing, and move forwards. And um, I, I wish you I wish you all the best for your journey. And I hope uh, this was a little bit helpful um, to to sort of help you navigate through these hard times if you are going through it. And to to everyone who did did well, well done. You deserve it. And now you're onto the other side and it all begins again. Um, so good luck. I'll see you guys on the next one.